Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. amen. So good to see everyone that has came back out on this afternoon for our afternoon worship service. God is certainly good and he's worthy of all of our praise. No matter how dark the clouds may get at times, God is still worthy to be praised. No matter how hard the rain falls, God is still worthy to be praised. And we show that in our efforts to push our way, to press our way, to come out to be in God's house to worship and to praise his holy and his divine name. I'm excited um, on this afternoon to begin over these next few weeks, these Sunday afternoons, um, a series of lessons that deal with how we worship, why we worship, dealing with how to get the most out of your worship experience. Because you know, if you're not careful, worship can become routine. If you're not careful, worship can become just some ordinary thing that you know is on your schedule and you know that you plan to go is just something that you do, but we miss out and we don't really get all that we can get out of the worship experience. So on today in Hebrews um, chapter number 10, we're in verses number 24 and 25. Hebrews chapter 10 verses 24 and 25. And the Bible says, and let us watch out for one another to provoke love and good works, not neglecting to gather together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging each other and all the more as you see the day approaching. I had, I had a topic I was going to give it on how to get the most out of your assembly, how to get the most out of the worship experience. But I was thinking about it, I, I got a better subject, and that is... You must be present to experience his presence. Come on now. I think that sounds a little better. Y'all like that a little better? You, you must be present to experience his presence. Now, in, in Acts chapter 13, verse number 22, it tells us that David was a what? A man after God's own heart. Well, how could that be said about David with everything that David did? And I think the way that that could be said is because of the love that David had to worship God. You remember in Psalm chapter 122, verses 1 and 2, we quote it all the time. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, come and let us go into the house of the Lord. He said, our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. So David was enthusiastic. David was happy about entering into the house of God so that he could worship God Almighty. In fact, he and those with him, guess this, got there early. He and those that were with him arrived before the appointed time and they waited with anticipation in order to have an opportunity to go into the house of God. So this is the same attitude that we as children of God should have when it comes to assembling with our brothers and our sisters in Christ. But unfortunately, some Christians do not have this same kind of excitement when it comes to assembling with your brothers and sisters in Christ. So in fact, some don't even find much joy in coming to church. And you can tell that by the expression on some people's faces. Man, you need to just go ahead and sit down. Man, I just came. I ain't trying to be here all day. That sound good. I done heard that 20 times. I'm trying to go. I'm ready to go home. You can tell that by the way that a person worships. Whether or not they are excited to be in the house of God. And, 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 when you, and, and we have to find a reason to be glad in serving God. If you have no other reason to be glad, you can be glad that God is sustaining you. You can be glad at the simple fact that God has blessed you with the opportunity to come into his house to lift up and praise his holy and his divine name. So personally, I consider our worship to God as a privilege. Yeah. You should never look at worship as something that, oh, you just got the chance to do or something that you have the opportunity to do. But you should look at worship as, a, as, a, as, a, as an opportunity for you to give back to God worship because God has given all things to you. Come do you on. realize that there's nothing that you have that is on your own accord? But everything that you have was given to you by God. That is why we worship God. You were created to worship God. That's why you were made. You were created to turn back and to worship your creator. Now, when, when, we, when we understand that our worship to God, when you come to the understanding that God is the audience. Yes. Yeah. 
and you are on the stage. Yeah. That you are not a spectator, you are not a looker in this thing, but you are the one that is performing before God, and God is looking at the way that we worship him. We, re we quote the scripture all the time, God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. Now to worship God in spirit simply means you got the right attitude. Come on now. You got the right way of thinking when you come into the house of God. And then to worship God in truth means to worship God according to what is written down in the word of God. Now, assembling with your brothers and sisters is important. It is not something that you just do because you want it. We are commanded to assemble with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Now we read it, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25. And let us consider one another. Here it is, in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a matter of some, but exhorting one another as so much more as you see the day approaching. Now, while we are commanded to come together, we are commanded to assemble, we should never look at it again, as I said, as something to do, but instead it should be considered a privilege and an honor. To come into the house of God to have the opportunity to worship God. You are lucky that you got the freedom to assemble. Do you not know that there are people in certain parts of this world right now that can't even come together like we're coming together right now to worship and praise God. But they, some of those people, they meet, they have to meet secretly because they are in fear for their lives or, or, or in fear of being thrown in prison. But we have the freedom to come together and worship God as we desire. We are not ever take that for granted. We are not ever take that for granted. We are not ever take for granted the opportunity that we have simply to come into the presence of God. Ain't nobody got no regulation on you telling that you can, you cannot go, but if you want to have that opportunity, you have it on today. Amen. So we should look forward to every chance. We should look forward to every opportunity that we have to come together with the body of Christ. For what? To sing praises unto God. Amen. To participate in prayer. To give of our means and of ourselves to God. And as we do that, we learn more and more about our creator. We learn more and more about our God. We need to realize that when we come together to worship God, we are honoring him for what he has done for us. It ain't a fashion show, even though we love to look good. It, 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 ain't, it ain't none, ain't about none of that. What nobody got on, what nobody doing, none of that. You come to worship for the purpose of worshiping God. Amen. And you know what? Worship ain't got nothing to do with how you feel. Come on, now. Come on. Worship ain't got nothing to do with what you think. Yeah. Worship is all in accordance with what thus said the Lord. So we need to realize that when we come together and worship God, we are honoring Him. I can promise that if you find worship boring, you ain't gonna make it in heaven. Come on, now. Come on. Now. If you find it hard to stay away on Sunday morning. If you find it hard to get active in the worship, you're going to have a hard time in heaven. Because guess what? This all that's going to be going on all day long, 24-7, 365, seven days of the week. This is what's going to be going on. So we need to learn how to like it down here. Because that's all that you're going to be doing up there. Now, we also need to understand... That the more you assemble with the saints, whether it's on the first day of the week, whether it's a Bible class or some other gathering, it helps you get stronger in your faith. Yeah. It helps you to become a stronger Christian. Now, when you get around people that are like-minded, when you get around people with the same values that you have, it helps you to keep your mind focused on that. It helps you to keep your mind focused on the goal that is at hand. We need all the help that we can get. Because can I tell you, being a Christian ain't easy. Yes, sir. Can I tell you, living the Christian life is not a walk in the park. Yes. That is why it is important for you to come together with your brothers and sisters so that we can encourage one another, so that we can build each other up. Where you lack may be my strong point. I may be able to help you out. Where you may, where you may have a need, I may be able to supply that need, but I won't know if we don't assemble together. So another thing that we can do that will help us to get more out of assembling with the saints, this is one thing that you can do 
Prepare your mind before you get here. Come on now. Don't wait to get to the house of God to set your mind on worshiping God. That's why we sang the song, I woke up this morning with my mind said, before you get here, you already have your mind set, your heart ought to be regulated and ready, man. I'm going to the house of God. All the stuff that I got going on in my personal life right now, it's going to be waiting on me when I get out of worship, but this opportunity, this time that I have set aside, is God's time. You got to stay there for a while now. We can and, 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 and this is the thing, this is the thing. We love to shortchange God. Come on now. Oh Lord. You keep our attention for 30 minutes. That's why even on your TV show, they know you can't keep your mind focused on that TV show for 30 minutes, for an hour. That's why they put commercials in there. That's why, and, and you look at it, look at it. You when you're watching the show, do you notice that the camera view changes every five to ten seconds? That's right. Because as a human being, you get tired of seeing the same thing. You get tired of looking at the same thing, and just so quickly, your attention just gone. Yes, sir. Just gone. That's why we have to make sure that before we get here, we already have our mind set. And y'all know that takes discipline. Yes, sir. Because it's so easy for your mind to wander. It is so easy for you to get off track. But yeah. that's why you have to discipline yourself and get into the practice that before you get here, you already have a mind made up to worship God. Your mind stayed on. Now this can be a big difference in whether you get something out of it. Yes. And you don't get something out of it. Now this is my question to people that say, man, I didn't get that out of it. It just didn't do nothing for me. <laughs> What did you bring? Yeah. You what did you put in? Yeah. Oh man, I tried to get some out the back. He said I had insufficient funds. You ain't putting that in there. That's why you couldn't get nothing out. If you don't put anything into it, if it, and this is the thing, because we expect God to just do it all. We expect God to bring his part and our part as well. But I hate to bring the news to you that God is not just going to give you everything. God is not just going to do everything for you. There's something that must be done on your part as well. Tell somebody you got to hold up your end of the deal. Boom, boom, And then here's another thing. Far too many times we spread ourselves too thin. We involved in this, we involved in that, we involved in this, involved in that, and here it is, you got your attention over here, your attention is over there, your attention is over here, your attention is over there, and so often when you find yourself involved in so many things, God in the church takes third, fourth place. When we have these other things going on in our life, so it is crucial, church, that we take time out before you even make it to the building, prepare yourself. Before you even pull up in the parking lot, already have your mind made up to worship God. Already have your mind made up. So another thing that we can do to help us to get the most out of our worship experience is to be mindful of our brothers and sisters. What do you mean be mindful of our brothers and sisters? We need to realize that our brothers and sisters in Christ appreciate us being here. You may not recognize it. But you do a whole lot of edifying and encouraging just by opening your mouth and saying. You do a whole lot of encouraging and edifying just you don't know what the person that is sitting next to you, the one behind you, the one in front of you, you don't know what they've been dealing with all week long. You don't know they've been fighting on the job, they've been fighting in the house, been fighting in a relationship, everything they turn around is a fight, but then they come into the house of God and they're lifting their voice and their brothers and sisters are lifting their voice and we are, as the scripture said, encouraging and lifting up one another in our voices in song and in praise to our heavenly father. Paul said something in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 around verse, um, beginning at verse number 20, Paul says, but now indeed there are many members yet one body and the eye cannot say to the hand I have no need of you nor again the head to the feet I have no need of you no much more those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which you think are less honorable, on these we bestow great honor, and our unpresentable parts have greater modesty. But our presentable parts have no need, but God composed the body, having given a greater, greater honor to that part which lacks it. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all members suffer with it. I need to repeat that for, 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 
He said, if one member suffer, all members suffer with it. And if one member is honored, all members rejoice with it. Paul makes it clear that every Christian is important. Everybody is somebody. Ain't no big eyes and no little U's in the house of God. We are all God's children. We are all on the same playing field because we all got to stand before the same God one day and be judged by the same God. As Paul said, we got to care for one another. Yeah. We got to look out for one another. Yeah. We got to be there for one another. When you see your brother and your sister suffer, you suffer with them. Amen. When you see your brother and your sister rejoice and being blessed, don't get mad because it ain't your blessing. Rejoice and, and rejoice and be excited for somebody else because, hey, if he blessing you, I know he'll be able to bless me. If he's doing something for you, I know he'll be able to do something for me. If God can open up a door for you, man, I'm looking at my windows. I know he's about to open up something for me as well. Now, even if you don't feel like you need encouragement, then think about those that do. Amen. And have your mind set on serving others instead of yourself. Yeah. We should also be mindful of those that are visiting with us. We got to be mindful. Whenever you see somebody new coming to town, you got to be mindful of those that are visiting because they can tell quickly whether you're a loving person or not. They can tell quickly whether you are a receptive person or not, simply because of the way you look at them when they come in. Mm -hmm. Simply because of the conversation that you have with them as they enter the building. So we ought to always be a people that express love. Yeah. We ought to always be a people with love and spirit. What do you say? With love and kindness have I what? Have I drawn thee? Yeah. With love and kindness. So we should also consider Jesus himself. Yes. Because his sacrifices made the church possible. Amen. His sacrifices made the church possible. And the Bible teaches us that he is with us when we are gathered together. What did he say? Where well, two or three are gathered together in my name, touching and agreeing on anything. He said, there am I in the midst of that. You can't see him, but he's here. You might not be able to hear him, but that does not change the fact that he is here. Whatever two or three are gathered, Jesus said, I am there in the midst of them. Amen. So you ought to realize that God is watching you. He's watching the way that you worship. And he's watching the way that you fellowship with your brothers and your sisters in Christ. And another thing that will help us is for you to engage yourself in the service. Yeah. Come on. Yes. Lord, don't just sit there and wait on the drop on your lap. <laughs> don't just sit there and act like somebody just gonna come and turn the light switch on for you. All right, you gotta go after your blessing. Yes, right. You gotta go after your blessing. You gotta, you gotta seek after something. That's our problem. We some lazy Christians. We lay back and almost say we just as sorry as we want. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5 
verses 18 and 19 says, yes, and be not drunk with wine, mm. in which is dissipation or excess, yes, but be filled with the Spirit, mm. speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Now, when the prayer is being led, listen to the words that are being yes, said. Yes, when somebody is praying, your mind ought to be focused. That's why you say in the very act of our bowing our head and closing our eyes means that we are taking time to shut out all distractions. And we are listening to what is being said so then you can make their prayer your prayer. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verses 15 and 16, he said, what is the conclusion then? He said, I will pray with the spirit and I will also pray with the understanding. He said, I will sing with the spirit and I will also sing with understanding. Otherwise, if you bless with the spirit, how will he who occupies the place of the ununiform say, amen at your giving of thanks since he does not understand what you say? Okay. Simply meaning, you can't say amen if you didn't hear the prayer. Come on, Come on, Come on, That's what he's saying. That's what he said. He said, otherwise, if you bless with the spirit, how would he who occupies the place of the ununiform say, amen, at the giving of thanks, since he did not even understand what it is that you say. When the preacher brings the message, listen carefully. Take notes. Don't just be going off what nobody say, man. They can be telling you anything. Go back, take notes, and study for yourself. Taking notes is another good way to what? Help you pay attention. Yes. Amen. Because, okay, I got point number. Okay, what scripture? What was that? It helps you to stay focused when you take notes. Because I guarantee you will learn something or be reminded of some things yeah. that you ought to be doing. Amen. I, and as I said, our society and many of us, we've gotten to a place to where we don't have no kind of attention span. We... We don't want to listen to anything. And based on my observations, I know I, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'll say that. Because, you know, I can get away with an hour. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I, amen. Amen, somebody. I can, I, I can get away. But this is, but, but this is a little, it's a difference in preaching for an hour and not saying that. Yeah. And being able to keep the people's attention. It's one thing to be going in circles saying the same thing over and over again. And it's another thing to actually be encouraging the people through the word of God. But it's hard to keep our attention. You got to really be saying something. You want to pay attention to what you are saying. We got to train ourselves. Because if we can sit there and binge watch a show on Netflix. That take 10, 11 hours out your day. You mean to tell me you can't listen to the word of God for an hour? Come on now, come on now, come on. Come on, man, come on. You go to the club and don't leave till they tell you life's going out. But we can't come into the house of God and stay for two hours. But, but man, man, look, man, look, it's 12 o'clock, man. You 12 o'clock, man. What, what? About time to go home, whatever. We, we give time and attention to everything else. Don't shortchange yourself when it comes to God. Amen. Because the devil is not shortchanging himself. He ain't having no mercy on you. So you are not having no mercy on him. And if you're going to be ready to fight him, you got to know what they'll say of the Lord. Come on, that's right. Amen. Now, another thing that's going to help some of us sitting closer to the front. Amen. Hello. Amen. Hello. We ain't gonna preach now. What's going to help some of us sitting closer to the front? What do you mean, preacher? The closer you are to the front, the less, the less distraction you have. Yes, that's true now. That's true. The closer you are to the front, the less distractions you have to deal with. If you are always a person that you know, you try to be out the way, try to be in the background, sit in the back, you're going to notice every child that moves. Yes, yes sir. You're going to notice every person that get up and go to the back. Everybody got to go get one. You got to look. You got to go, okay, what you doing? Where you going? What's going on? We got to focus ourselves. We got to keep our minds set. Another benefit of sitting in the front is the singing. Yes, yeah. That's another benefit. Of, when you sit up close, you get to hear all the voices behind you. Yes, sir. 
So, so it makes the singing, you yeah, know what I'm saying? It makes the yeah, singing even more beautiful. I'm trying to get us to a place to where we desire to be engaged. To where you have a desire, man, I just want to be involved in the things of God. I want to be, whether it's singing, whether it's praying, whether it's giving, whatever it is, if it's about God, I want to be involved in it. Now, the last thing I want to suggest that will help you to get the most out of your worship experience is for you to realize that the more you go, the more you're going to grow. Hey, all right now. That's the key. That's the key. The more you go, the more you are going to grow spiritually. Amen. We should certainly want to grow because Peter said something, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 18, he said, but grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. 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 It's common knowledge that the more you get involved with something, the more you're going to know about it. The more you get involved in something, the more you are going to appreciate it. It's kind of like exercise. The more you exercise, the more fit you become. Once you start enjoying how good you feel from exercising all the time, you don't want to stop. You just want to go, man, I just can't get enough of it. That's the same way to become when you come into the house of God in your spirituality and your worship. The more you come and the more you learn, your appetite is going to grow. Your desire for God is going to want to grow. And guess what? You're going to move from sipping on the milk, man. I want a steak. I want some potato. I want the meat of the word of God because you're growing spiritually. Yes, amen. Now at first You may find it difficult To make all the services I ain't saying it's going to change your life But we got to make an effort yeah. Yeah. You got to make an effort yes. I, I, I remember as a child Man, I, I used to want to come to church Amen, amen bro Every Sunday you got to every Sunday amen. Twice, twice amen. Twice and don't let it be no homecoming going on, man. We got to get on the bus. Got to go all out of town. Got to go over here then. Got to go over here and go through the whole thing. And then we got to come back. Oh, even so, we got to come back over here. Then Wednesday night, after I get out of school, man, football practice all week, got to go to the church. Got to go to Bible study, man. You got to do all this. Look, look, and don't let it be no gospel me going on close by. Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, man. And they had, some of them had the nerve to have a week long with me. We, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, man. Hit me, man. It's hot outside. Skeetles flying, man. What's flying? All this going on. And we got to be out here. Ain't got no fan on that team. Yes, sir. We get like that sometimes. Yes, we do. Yes, sir. Yes, we do. It can become routine. It can become boring. And it become mundane for you. Sometimes you honestly feel like you're just going through the motions. That's why you got to learn to train yourself, church. You got to discipline yourself because the enemy does not want you to remain focused right, right. because he knows the more focused you are, the more successful you will be as a child of God. So that's why he got to put these little thoughts in your mind. He got to get you off track, he got to get you off focus so he can have his way with you. That's right. Chip away. That's it. You got to chip away. You gotta remain focused. That's right. You got to keep your mind Focus on the goal at hand, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the matter of some is. And I know I, one thing I say, you know, COVID-19 really messed a lot of church people up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it, messed, it messed a lot, it messed oh, a lot yeah. of church people up. Man. Because, you know, uh, and even after COVID is gone, it's going to be a lot of them say, man, you know, man, I, I watch y'all in the house, you know. I just enjoy it. But you don't have community at home. No. And a Christian cannot be a successful Christian by themselves. No, you, cannot. you need community. Yes, you do. You need family. Yeah. Yes. That's how we grow. Yeah. That's yes. how we build upon one another. Yeah. You won't make it far by yourself. That's right. You're going to need some. What they say, we all need somebody. Lean on. Yeah. Lean on. Yes, sir. You're going to need somebody to walk with on this journey of Christendom. You're gonna need somebody. You don't know everything there is to know, yeah, yeah. but when you 
fellowship with your brothers and sisters. It ain't nothing for you to be at home studying. Call up one of your brothers or your sons. Man, I was looking at this at this scripture. What you think about it? That's the kind of thing. Because truth be told, a lot of us really don't know each other outside of church. Relationship. Relationship. We don't know. We, we ain't never been in your house. I don't know if you can cook. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what you got going on. We got to become more relational. Yes. That's right. We got to actually intend to spend time with one another. Right. How are you going to say your family and you don't know each other? We got to spend time with one another. Get to know each other and be there for one another mm -hmm. when we need each other. That's what it said. Ye that are strong are the bad the infirmities. Of those that are weak. As I said, you may be weak in a certain area of your life. Get together with your brothers and sisters. They may have experienced some of the same things that you have experienced. And they'll be able to help you get over that hill. And help you to be better as a child of God. But you will miss all of that if you ain't here. You'll miss all of that if you are not present. First Timothy says something. In verse chapter 4 verses 8 and 9. He says, but bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things. Having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come, this is a faithful saying and worthy of expectation. He said, bodily exercise is good. It's good, but you got to be working on your spirit, man. Yeah. So, many, so many of us, we, we fed good physically. Some of us are suffering from malnutrition when it comes to our spirituality. We're not getting a good diet of the word of God. The only time we get to eat on the word is when we gather together with our brothers and sisters. But even in your long time, you got to find time to spend with God. Because can I tell you, majority of your growth is not going to happen in you. It's going to happen in your long time with God. It's going to happen in that time where it's just you and God because it's only when it's just you and him that God can really deal with you all distractions gone all other things out of the way and God can really deal with your heart so we miss his presence if we're not present yes and we have to get to a place to where we bring ourselves to a place of discipline to where I can control whether or not I can stay focused in the worship service. Yes. I, I, I can keep myself trained to whether I can pay attention to where they're singing, to whether there's praying, what else going on. Even when it comes down for communion, man, I'm, 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 not, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing it, but my mind is actually on Jesus. Yes. My mind is actually on the cross. My mind is actually on the sacrifice that he made for me. And once we get to that place, never again will we be able to say, I didn't get nothing out of it. Once you get to that place, never again will you be able to say, man, this show was boring today. Man, I just, man, it was about pitiful. Man, they ain't did nothing. I could have stayed at the house. Man, I could have watched Joe Lowe staying on the TV. Man, I could have, man, I could have did anything. No, we will not ever get to that point. Amen. Because if you do what you're supposed to do, you'll always be here. Eager and excited. We'll be like David then. We'll get him before time. We'll get, man, we'll be like David, man. We'll be on the outside waiting for the opportunity that we have to come on the inside. And before we come on the inside, we will have already made up our mind to worship God and to praise him. You know what? And I can't be out all night, Saturday night and expect for my mind to be at 100% when I come in here on Sunday morning. I can't, I, I can't be, I, I can't be out. Yep. Every Saturday night, three, four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and then expect to be focused oh. when I come into the house of God. Because you know, Tylenol don't kick in that quick. <laughs> well, you can't get your, that, that shower ain't going to take it off that quick. You, you going to need some time to get yourself together. <laughs> so since you already know. The day is approaching. Yes. 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 Why not prepare yourself? If you're going to go hang out, hang out Saturday morning, you know, you can get some rest on Saturday. Amen. It don't work, bro. You're right. It don't work. It's 
my, me growing as a child of God, it's not going to happen by accident. I got to be intentional. I got to be, I got the plan to be a child. Of, I got the plan to be here. You know, it, it, I got to plan to grow in my spirituality. And I have to plan. When I get into the house of God, man, I'm going to be focused. I'm going to set my mind. I'm going to give my all. Man, I know I can't sing like Mahalia. I know I can't sing like Richard. I can't sing like none of them. But you know what? When I come into the house of God, I'm going to open my mouth. And it may, be, it, may, it may sound like nails on a chalkboard to you. But I'm going to open up my mouth. This is, I'm going to sing unto God. When, and man, even when you pray, man, you might not be able to hear them because of me saying, Amen, glory, Lord, I thank you. Because while the prayer is going on, my mind is just going back over all the time God has heard my prayer God has delivered me even in the preaching you know what I'm going to encourage the man of God Amen. Right. whoever it is I'm not just going to sit there that's right that's right that's right if it's the truth amen yes, if it's the preach go ahead help yourself yes, if it's the truth yes, help the church that's right. come on now if it's the truth yes, sir. Yes, sir. that's it and if you can't say that ouch <laughs> you heard me. My toe is in the way. Help somebody. Yes, Say something. Yep, that's my toe. Yes, sir. And you know what? That helps to encourage those that are participating in the worship service. Yes, yeah. Somebody get up here and sing, no matter who it is. And they're giving their all. They don't want you to. <laughs> right. Open up your mouth and sing. Act as if God is up there leading the singing. Put your all into it. Whatever opportunity that you have to participate in the worship service of God, make sure you're giving you everything. Everything, yes. Because he didn't give you just a little bit. He didn't give you just anything. He didn't give you the bare minimum. That's right. So you ought not give God the bare minimum. Give him all. We just want all kind of discounts when it comes to God, but we want him to go all out when it comes to us. Yes, sir. Be intentional. And be serious about your worship. Now look for over these next few weeks. We're going to look at the various parts of our worship. How they are important to us. When it comes to singing. When it comes to the Lord's Supper. When it comes to prayer. Everything that we do. It has a significance. And it has an importance. And if we don't understand that. We'll always feel like church is a chore. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand that, you will always feel like church is just a bore and it's just a drag on your life. Until you get to that point, you won't recognize it's our honor and our privilege yeah. to be able to do what we're doing. It's, an honor, it's an honor and a privilege to come before a mighty God what a blessing. and to worship him what in spirit yes. and in truth. My yes. brother and my sister, if you are here on today and you're not a member of the body of Christ, maybe you're watching this live stream at this moment and you are not a member of the body of Christ, you don't yet know the Lord and the pardon of your sins, you come by hearing his word, believing the same, repenting of your sins, confessing Christ as your savior, being buried with him in baptism, rising to walk a new creation in Jesus Christ. The Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Maybe you are already a Christian, but you say, hey man, I'm standing in need of prayer. I've fallen. I'm struggling, dealing with some things. Hey, the prayers of the righteous, they availeth much. And if you can't find anything else to help you with your situation, I assure you, praying to God will change your situation. God will answer in due time, and he will give you the help that you are standing in the need of. So if you are subject to the invitation, why not come to Jesus now, as together we stand and sing the song of invitation. What a fellowship, what a fellowship.